Like and share. All righty, all righty, all righty. Tampa Bay, it's that time again. Saturday afternoon, one o'clock. Porsche Talk Radio. The guys are here. We got a great conversation for you today. You know, I kind of threw something out there last week, and mm -hmm. I, and I, I left it hanging. Some trouble. You know, and some, and some of you guys, you know, may remember what that word was at the end of the show last week. But uh, this week, we gonna we gonna take on, you know, kind of where we left off and explain some stuff. Cause last week's show, some people say it was kind of serious. You uh -huh. know, because I'm talking about death and dying and and how you start all this stuff when you're young. I mean. When you're young and invincible, you know, you, you know, you're something about youth, where where you just don't have to do nothing to maintain your body. So you pick up a lot of these bad habits. Uh, like I say, if you just take something that that vaporizes the particles of of dust and pollution in the air, if you do that for 20 years. You're gonna get lung cancer. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You know nothing else. No, no, no nicotine. No nothing else in it. Just do it. Drinking destroys the liver. You know, uh, it's a lot of people say marijuana don't do anything to you, but yeah. don't, if it don't do anything to you, again, it vaporizes the negative stuff that's in the atmosphere, and then you take it into your lung. Whether it ain't got anything with getting high uh, or getting anything else, just the fact that you're superheating air. And you're sucking it into your body. At some point, you do it enough, it will kill you. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Uh, now we're going to be not so, not so serious, right? Yeah, we're going to start the show. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to Porch Talk Radio on this Saturday Live. afternoon. Uh, uh, this is Eddie, Gabriel, Tim. You know, we're doing what we normally do on Saturday. We, we thank you for listening. And watching. And, and watching. And... Uh, and this week's show is going to be different. And, and I'm going to do something that I don't, I don't do a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, but, but, I, but we're going to talk about something. And a lot of people really don't know the real story. So I hollered out reparations uh -oh. at the end of the show last week. Uh, you know, for some people, you know, that's a bad word. Mm -hmm. For some people, it's a good word. But most people don't even understand what it's all about. So let me open the show. Uh, then we'll we'll talk about something. Forty acres and a mule. I know uh, most black folks understand what that's what that's talking about. And then I tell you some some about forty acres and a mule. And if if you want to have a conversation, we can. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, we can move on to actually what reparations is all about. So, Porch Talk Radio. If you want to call in. During the show, the call in number is 813-251-9867. 813-251-9867. If you want to call after the show, uh, during the week, you know, and talk to me about something, about anything, Eddie Adams Jr., cell phone, 813-12. If you want to text me, text me at that number. Want to email me, Eddie, E D D I E, at porchtalkradio.com. Eddie at porchtalkradio.com. And, and before I get in, and I, I've been meaning to do this for a couple of weeks and, and have not done it, uh, the price of gas, mm -hmm. if many of you remember, I've mentioned that several times over the last couple of months. And if we all remember back in November of last year, before the election, the price of gas was $1.62. I know a lot of you have forgot that. This week, price of gas, regular, $2.90. $2.90. cents. Now, if you remember, over the period of the last four years, the price of gas was up and down, up and down, up and down, but mostly trending mm -hmm. down, all the way down to $1.62, which is the lowest it's been in a, in a great while. 
two. It was a dollar, a dollar, a dollar okay. eighty six back in the day. No, well, back in the day, it was twelve cents. But well, I mean, we ain't, going, we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't going back that far. I'm just talking about November. You know, in no, in November, you know, it was a dollar sixty two. Now, Woo. it's two ninety now, trending up at a colossal rate. Colossal. And and, and, and I'm gonna say something, and some of you will get, some of you won't get. You know, it just depends on where you head at. Because if you want to argue with me about it, you know, uh, time will tell. That's the good thing about this. The fact, and I had somebody on my Facebook page tell me that the president don't control the price of gas. All these other factors always come into play and all of it affect the price of gas. Eddie, but people don't know what they don't know. Well, that's what, that's, what, that's what I'm here to tell them. I'm not saying they're stupid, but they just don't know. That's what I'm here to tell you. Okay, if you go through the process of creating some kind of tax, uh, some kind of... Uh, Regulation? You know, some, some kind of executive order and do this and do that, and, 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 and it co goes into effect, the price of gas has went up over a dollar a gallon, and everybody who has a lawnmower has a generator, has a car, has a truck. Or a business that uses those. Has anything that uses fossil fuel, pays it. You have no choice. All the electrical companies, all the utilities, lights, water, you know, whatever else, uh, you know, even the phone company. Everybody pays the, the gallon, the price per gallon, I don't, I'm not even calling it a tax because it's not a tax. You have no choice. It goes up, it goes down. But mostly, it's going to be going up. And might as well get used to it. I saw someone say something the other day about 999. <laughs> say, say Biden number is 999, even though everybody knows that that was Mr. Herman Cain. You know, but well, Biden's black, you know. But $9.99 nine <laughs> $9 gas is possible. Now, think about your life paying $9 a gallon. At least you live the express for for a gallon of gas. Now, now don't think it's impossible because some places in Europe, other parts of the world, they have paid nine dollars a gallon for gas. Well, Eddie, and, and again, people not paying attention as we're trying to bring to their attention right here is the fact that the president, when he signs an order, says we're no longer going to have produce our own oil. We're going to buy it from the Middle East, which can be trusted as far as I can throw Tim. Uh, which isn't that far at all, uh, then that means we can't produce our own, Eddie. That means that we have to buy it. And what used to be 36 bucks a barrel is now over 55 or something. It's gone crazy. It's gone 64. crazy. 64. Yeah, and we're paying that. So whatever, I won't say fool, whatever person's not paying attention, when the president says we're no longer going to produce our own and get it cheaper to our people, we're not going to go into deals with the Middle East that hates us and give them lots of money so they can he, put weapons against us. He, he don't say we're not going to do our own and get it cheaper. Cause, no. Because he, know, right. he knows we're not no. going to get it cheaper. Now, what's happened, and the main thing that's what's happening, and again, this is not my topic for the day, uh -oh. but, but I just want folks to know and understand, all that money mm -hmm. that was being used to buy oil and gas and produce it and the, and the, and the pipeline and, and this this uh, from Alaska and this from, and support from, America. from, from, from Canada and where that money was coming to and staying in the United States. Now all of that money is going overseas. It's going, it's going to, to, to the mid-Europe, mid you know, it's, it's going to, to, uh, to countries that don't like our, that don't like us, hate our guts. It's going to Japan, it's going to China, it's going to other places where that money was being used to make America stronger. Uh, I ain't gonna say to make America great again. <laughs> People get upset over that. But but, but that, that's why. That's I, offensive. Yeah, that, that's why I didn't. That's why I didn't say. I'm but not, Eddie, you I'm not had, trying to Eddie, offend you, anybody. I'm you just had trying this to make conversation sure. with us, and you told us why can't the black people keep the money in their own communities? Why can't they just buy from themselves right there and just recirculate that dollar? You told us that the Jewish people they make a they make a good living just keeping that money right there in their own community, and that's what the Trump administration has been doing is keeping that money in America so American families could live and prosper. 
And now Joe, China Joe, said, no, 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 no. Screw that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and send the money. Other countries have always hated us. But that's... Uh, that, that, we'll make our that, Americans that, uh, dependent on that, the government. That, that democratic policies and... and destructive, Eddie. Dem that's Democrat, destructive. Democrat relationship, and, and that's part of, of the, you know... The globalist like, like, approach, like, like, somebody, like somebody said uh, before, elections have consequences. That's true, and we're as, suffering and we're paying. As a point, as a point... Nine dollars a gallon. Nine nine nine. Nine nine nine. It's coming. Even even if you get the five five five, it's a lot different. <laughs> a lot different. Yeah. Than than one sixty two. Mm hmm. All right. Well. So. Forty acres and a mule. Everybody has heard forty acres mm -hmm. and a mule. So so you guys are not. Push talk radio ain't the first place you heard forty acres and a mule. I actually had an article that I read, and and before four black folks, and and, and four we can have a intellectual conversation uh -oh. about reparations. Mm -hmm. We got to understand what we're being reparation, uh, being reparated, uh, uh, we're being repaid for. Okay, that's a good start. And and the, the main thing a lot of people you know bring up was the promise that was made supposedly to black folks by the United States of America. Well, I'm gonna tell you that story. Now now there's nothing that's gonna undo the 200 plus years of slavery, free labor, the trillions of dollars of profit that made America the country that it is in the time in which it made itself known. Because the country is only 200 some years old. So we did in 200 some years that other countries had been around for three and 4,000 years had not done. And, and, and part of that had to do a lot with free labor. Harvesting, producing, manufacturing, all that stuff. So you can't pay us back for that. So let me let me let me let me give you this info. Uh, and, and I'll stop it a little bit and, and, and if you guys want to call we can we can have a conversation. Okay, but the truth behind 40 acres and a mule. We all have heard the story of 40 acres and a mule. Promise to former slaves. It's a staple in black history lesson, and it's the name of Spike Lee's film company. Mm -hmm. The Promise was the first systematic attempt to provide a form of reparations to newly freed slaves. And it was astonishingly radical for its time. Proto-socialists in its complications it in fact with such a policy would radically in any country today change the government massive confiscation of private property so what it's basically saying there was some 400 thousand acres formerly owned by confederate landholders uh, along uh, landowners and it methodically redistributed to former black slaves what most of us have heard ideologically it would have really generated black leaders themselves if you took 400,000 acres of land and gave it to black folks in the 1860s, mm -hmm. this country would be different. It would be considerably different. It is difficult to stress the adequacies, how revolutionary this idea was. As the historian Eric Farnay puts it in his book, Reconstruction, America, Unfinished Revolution, 1863 to 
1877. Here in the coastal South Carolina and Georgia, the prospective beckon for the transformation of Southern society more radical even than the end of slavery. Hmm. Try to imagine how profoundly different the history of, the, of race relations in the United States would have been had the policy been implemented and enforced. Had the former slaves actually had access to the ownership of land, of property, if they had had a chance to self-sufficiency economically to build, occur, and pass on wealth. After all, one of the prim primary principles, promise, primary principle, principles, prom principal promises of America was the possibility of average people being able to own land. That's anybody, black, white, blue, green, and gray. You know, what separated us from, from the kings and queens and nobles and, and all the other different forms of government, most of the land was owned by the monarchs or the kings or the rulers or the dictators. In America, all people had opportunity for ownership and all that it entailed. As we know all too well, this promise was not to be realized for the overwhelming majority of the nation's former slaves, who numbered at that time about 3.9 million. So, we got this proposed promise. It was the way America had proposed to repay for slavery directly to those who were enslaved. This is the government. This is the government. What exactly was promised? We have been taught in schools about the source of the policy of 40 acres and a mule was Union General William Sherman. And it was called Field, it was called Special Field Order 15, issued January the 16th. 1865. The order was for 40 acres, but not the mule. Just saying. <laughs> so is the details. The, 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 mule, the mule came along later. The mule came along in, in another part of, uh, of this movement. What Sherman prescribed was 40 acres in an order that made and, 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 and was for a massive land re redistribution, actually the result of what Sherman and the Secretary of War, Edward Stanton, led four days before the issue of the order, with 20 leaders in the black community in Savannah, Georgia, where Sherman had set up his headquarters following his infamous, uh, famous March to the Sea. The meeting was unprecedented in American history. Today we commonly use the phrase 40, acre and a 40 acres and a mule, but few of us have read the order itself. Three of its parts are relevant here. Section one bears repeat, repeating in full. The islands from Charleston south, the abundant rice fields along the river, but 30 miles back from the sea, and the country bordering St. John's River Florida are reserved and set aside or set apart from the settlement for the settlement of the Negroes. 
are now made free by the acts of war and the proclamation of the President of the United States. What that is saying is 30 <coughs> miles of coastline of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Mm -hmm. 30 miles in. So, and Florida went to the St. John's River. Section 2, so, so the first section said what land mm -hmm. was going to make up the 400,000 acres of land that the 40 acres were going to come from. So it's not prime real estate. Uh, any, any oceanfront property. Yeah. Section 2 specifies that these new communities, moreover, would be governed entirely by black, by black people themselves. Mm. See, we never heard that. Mm. It actually said that the black people would do their own government. Okay, on the islands and in the settlement hereafter to be established, no white person, whatever, unless military officers or soldiers detailed for duty would be permitted to reside and the sole and executive management of affairs would be left to the free people themselves. They didn't have to go back to Africa. They was creating a community of black people here in the United States in which white folks couldn't live in. I mean, that's pretty much what, what you know what they're talking about. By the laws of war and orders of the U.S. president, the free and and must be dealt with. Black folks are, he said, Negroes are free and must be dealt with as such. Finally. Section 3 specifies the allocation of land. Each family shall have a plot of not more than 40 acres of tillable ground. Tillable. Tillable, which means they, they had to give you something you could work. You could, you could put a plow in. You can turn over. You can plant stuff in. So not nothing in Vegas, then. Yeah, you can't, you can't give desert. And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and of the land they talk about, you know, most of it was good, was good land. And when the borders on such water channels, talking about water, with not more than 800 feet of waterfront, the possession of which land the military authorities will afford them protection. So that means the military will protect you from folks coming in and taking your riverfront waterfront, lakefront, oceanfront mm -hmm. property until such time as they could protect themselves until Congress shall regulate their titles. With this order, 400 acres of land, a strip of coastline stretching from Charleston, Charleston South Carolina to St. John's River in Florida, including Georgia Sea Islands, and mainland 30 miles in from the coast. This will be redistributed to the newly free slaves. The extent of this order and its larger implication are mind boggling. So, if she tried to contact me, I didn't see it because I had a piece of paper in front uh, of the thing. So, uh, so, so, so basically, what they're what they're what they're talking about is the forty acres in the mule was not just forty acres and the mule. They were specific in yeah where yeah 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 it, it was it, it was it, a specific part, and it was pretty much creating a space. In the United States, that mm -hmm. was strongly slave-oriented, 
And so I guess pretty much if you were a slave, you could move to this part of the country and be protected and be governed by your own people. Eddie, I am so thankful as a minority that has many, many black friends and a married one uh, that that never happened because if you look at what's happened with the Indians, that has been an absolute government disaster from the word go. And trillions have been spent on keeping them isolated on the little reservations. And the government, you and I both know, they go back on their word sometimes. Well, and the Indians were led off of fertile land. Yeah. And they were moved out but into the, horrible pieces of but land. The Indians have never self governed, they have always had some United States of America government official over them and the territory. That's why we have a treaty. You know, they said, you know, you can do this, you can do that. But at the end of the day, whatever the government decides happened on the reservation always happened on the reservation. They were not self-governing. But that's the same government, Eddie, that did this deal here. You're talking about your well, 40 acres of mule. Well, that's the same government. I, I ain't got to the part of the way they reneged on things. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm getting warmed up. Go yeah. ahead. Okay. So who, who came up with the idea? Here's how this radical proposal started, which, which most have completely blown the mind of the Confederate, the rebel Confederate. Actually, you know, this came out. The abolitionist Charles Summer and Thaddeus Stevens and other radical Republicans, get that, radical Republicans. They were crazy. They're trying to help the black yeah, people? Radical Republic Republicans. Oh you know, had been actively advocating land redistribution to break the back of Southern slave owners' power. Mm -hmm. Democrats. By Sherman, by Sherman's plan, okay, we got it, okay, we got it, we got to call it, let me get through this part. Mm -hmm. Okay, by Sherman's plan, it only took shape after a meeting that he and Stephen had with those black ministers mm. at 8 p.m. January the 12th on the second floor of Charles Green's mansion in Savannah, in, uh, in on Savannah Macon Street. In this broadcast stroke, this is where, in its broadest strokes, the Fort Acres and a Mule was their idea. These were black folks who came up with this idea of 40 acres. And they're priests, they're preachers. And a mule, yeah. That's exactly. awesome. Christians. Exactly. That's awesome. All right, call it welcome to Porch Talk Radio on this Saturday, Saturday afternoon. Who are you? Where are you calling from? And what say you? Hello? My name is Margaret. Hey, Margaret. And you know me. Yeah. Yes. This yes. is so great. What this tells me is that the good intentions that they had Number yes. one, what you just said was they consulted with those slaves, with the yes. ministers. They yes. made that suggestion. They didn't say give us a handout or uh, give us, you know, just give us, give us, give us that. They went, if we had these acreage, we can be able to make it for ourselves and, and be able to, to, to do for ourselves. And we can manage that. They, they, they knew that they could, they could manage it because they've been managing plantations and doing that. So all they needed was to have that and to do it. And if I often think about if that would have worked out, how different would it be if the reconstruction would have been happening and completed? Because that was it. So they wasn't acting like, a, 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 you know, like the handouts and, you know, take care of us. No. If we have this acreage, we'll be able to plant, we'll be able to build, and we'll be able to... Uh, you know, feed ourselves and take care of ourselves. And the interruption was, okay, what he said, Sherman said, this was because of war. Right. Who they warring with? Act of war. The Confederate States of America. Right. That's who they were warring with. Who gave this to those people and gave them this? The United States of America. Yes. There is no Confederate States of America. That's who they were warring with. And that's why Confederate States of America is not Because they didn't win. And secondly, uh, because they, this is what they wanted. So they wanted a different story for us. So that story. So a sympathizer, as they say, when Lincoln was killed, he 
is a VP or particularly a Democrat, even trying to be nice and work with the people that, you know, was there and thinking, okay, the United States and all this. So he, he, he was not sympathetic at all. And then he did not implement what was intended. There was protection in there. There was a chance to own things. And partly that did happen for a few years. And we had people that were in Congress. We had leadership in our city. And they were doing quite well uh, uh, with all of this. And what happened? Interruption by Democrats. Well, and well, Ukraine. well, part, part of, part of, to stop the progress. Well, part of, part of what happened was, you know, it was intended to be a punishment for for the southern slave owners to to pretty much give to blacks as a reward for for two hundred years of, of working for free. They knew that in the United States. Property was everything. Mm -hmm. the, value of, the value of land. And had the government protected free black folks from white folks and, and carpetbaggers, folks who mm -hmm. came from, from the north to the south to take stuff, uh, you know, that this, this idea was a great idea. But, as always, it got sabotaged. Mm. And, and I'll talk about that, uh, you know, a little further on on what happened to the idea and, and why the, the country, you know, reneged, pretty mm -hmm. much reneged on the idea because it only lasted, you know, from the time that Sherman, Sherman did this and came up with this great idea, but <coughs> during the next term, something happened. So so thank you for calling. Thank and, you, and We appreciate it. Okay. And, and I'm just making thank sure. You for and I thank you, you're putting it out 200 years. Yes. We don't have 400 years that we have been dealing with this. 200 years in America. Yes. It might have been 400 years since slavery we started right. and all like that. But all of that was not America. No. Not Smart America. Lady. I went to Africa last year in the year we turned uh, 1519 to 2019 in Ghana. That's Ghana, but that's not the United States. Right. So putting all that stuff on, we need to see, be realistic of what really happened and who really it happened to and who really was the perpetrator. I'll end with that. Thank you Thank very you. much. And, 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 and the reason I'm, I'm I'm doing this is because a lot of folks do not, a lot of folks don't know the real story. So that's what we're doing. Okay, next caller. Caller, welcome to Porch Talk Radio. Who are you? Where are you calling from? And what say you? Hello? Hello, Eric. Yes. Yeah, Charles Culver. How you doing? Thank you for that. I had heard some of that way back a little of that way back and got all the gist of it but you know something uh, uh, uh i still think america still owes reparation i just i can't i'll never be able to get that out of my mind but you know something they owe more america owes black america more than just money <laughs> it's, it, you know it's land it's waterways it's a whole lot of things that you know that america still owes black people for that and i believe this if we come together on one accord, because Johnny Cochran came real close because Johnny Cochran just kind of died off, but I believe they killed Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran was supposed <laughs> to say really what America owed, but they ain't fooling me now. I believe they killed, I believe America's government killed Johnny Cochran, but he, that's, that's that. But you know something, you know, uh, uh, in all of those that <coughs> pull us out, get rid of them. Like, I, I believe what Farrakhan say, shoot them first. That's the show black folk out, black folk selling black folk out. Like, Sarah Farrakhan was like, but then no, shoot them first, get them out of the way, let's go and do business, and let's tally up. Okay, man, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks, Thank, sir. Thank you for the call. All right, and, 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 and again, like, in, for those folks who have listened to us in the past, and, and, and normally we, we don't have the nature of the show, is, is, is a, the, the nature of the show is about providing information. And I know a lot of folks don't have this information, and a lot of folks have never heard it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just like a great folk tale. It's been out there, folks say it, but they don't have a clue as to what it means and how, how it came about. So I'm really trying to give you the background story on what happened, how it happened, and, uh, and before we're done, you know, uh, you, you'll know what happened to the promise, how it died, and mm -hmm. where it died. So 
So let me continue. Uh, Staten was aware of the historical significance of this meeting. And I'm talking about the meeting with the, with the, with the pastors and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and the government officials and the Secretary of War and, and Sherman. Sherman. Sherman done went through the South. He done beat the damn Confederate mm -hmm. ASS. He done, he done whooped, he, done, he, done, he broke out a can of whoop, you know, and you know what go with, whoop, whoop ASS. And, and, he, and he marched through the South. Mm -hmm. And he beat everybody he saw. <laughs> you know, I remember the old, old saying, you know, you know, go, go down to the Buccaneer, don't beat anybody. You, you run out there now, you get your butt whooped too. So. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but Sherman, Sherman marched through the South and whooped everybody they came across. So at this point, he got two things. He's trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to make sure that the blacks who have been working for free for, <clears throat> for, for years and years and years got the one thing that made America different from all the other countries on the planet. He made sure that there was land ownership, value. So, as the meeting was at the meeting, Henry Ward Beecher, Harriet Beecher Stowe's mm -hmm. brother, a verbatim transcript of the discussion which Beecham read to his congregation at the New York Plymouth Church and which the New York Daily Tribune printed on February the 13th, 1865, edition of the paper. For the first time in history of this, in the history of this nation, the representatives of the government had gone to those poor, debased people, debased, debased people, <laughs> to ask them what they wanted for themselves. Staten had suggested to Sherman that they gather the leaders of the local Negro community and ask them something no one else had apparently thought to ask them. What do you want for your own people following the war? And what they wanted astounded us even today. Who was those 20 thoughtful leaders who exhibited such foresight? They were all ministers, mostly Baptists and Methodists. Methodists. Mm -hmm. Most curiously of all to me is that 11 of the 20 had been born free in a free state. Mm -hmm. They were born free. So 11 of the 20 folks of which 10 had lived as free men in the Confederacy during the course of the Civil War. The one other, the one other man, James Lynch, was born free in Maryland, which at that time was a slave state and had only moved to the South two years before. The other nine ministers had, had been slaves in the South who became contraband and, his, and, and hence free only because of the Emancipation Proclamation which Union forces, when li, Union forces liberated them. Their chosen leader and spokesman was a Baptist minister by the name of Garrison Frazier, age 67, same age as I am, hmm. who had been born in Grainsville, North Carolina, and was a slave until 1857, when he purchased freedom for himself and his wife for a thousand dollars in gold and silver. That's a lot of money back then. It was. As the New York Daily News uh, Tribune reported, Reverend Fraser had been in the ministry for 35 years, and it was he who bore the responsibility of answering the 12 questions that Sherman and Staten had put to the group. The stake for the future of Negro people were high. Frazier and his brother did not disappoint. What did they tell Sherman and Staten? 
that the Negroes most, what the Negroes wanted most was land. The way we can, the way we can best take care of ourselves, Frazier began his answer to the critical third portion had most separately done in despair. He wanted to be placed on land until it was able, he wanted, they wanted to be placed on the land until they were able to buy it, buy it, and make it their own. So it wasn't just giving them the land. They wanted the land, they wanted to work the land, buy it from the government, and make it their own. So they wouldn't ask for a handout. No, with titles and deeds and whole whole nothing. They just wanted the opportunity. Yeah. Wow, that's even better. And when asked next where the free slave would rather live, rather scatter amongst the whites, or in colonies by themselves without missing a beat, Frazier, you know, said, I would prefer to live by ourselves. But there is a prejudice against us in the South that would take years for us to overcome. When Poe independently around the table, all but one, James Lynch, James Lynch, 26, the man who had moved south from Baltimore, said that he agreed with Frazier four days later. Sherman issued order, special order, field order number 15, after President Lincoln approved it. So, so Abraham Lincoln was president. He was all for the 40 acres. Mm -hmm. Now, what became of the land that was promised? In response to the order and the mandate, immediately, when the transcript of the meeting was reprinted in the black publication, uh, Christian Register, an editorial note intoned that from this, it will be seen that the colored people down south are not so dumb as many suppose mm -hmm. or propose them to be. Reflecting north south, slave free black class tensions and continue well into the modern civil rights movement. The efforts throughout the South was electric. As Eric Founder explained, the freed hesitated to take advantage of the order. Baptist minister Ulysses Houston, one of the group, one, one of the group that had met with, Savannah, with, with Sherman in Savannah, led 1,000 blacks to Skidway Island, that's in Georgia, where they established a self-governing community with Hudson, uh, with Houston as the black governor. And by June, 400, by June, 40,000 freedmen had settled on 400,000 acres of Sherman's land. By the way, Sherman later ordered that the army could lend the new settlers mules, hmm. hence the phrase 40 acres and a mule. Oh, that's where it so came from. that's where from. the mule come from. But it wasn't part of the initial deal. No. And what happened is astounding. It was a visionary program which would have fundamentally altered the course of American race relations. Andrew Jackson. Hero. Andrew Jackson's Lincoln's successor and a sympathizer with the South. Oh, that's the end of that one. Overturned the order in the fall of 1865. Andrew Jackson. That was a Democrat. And as Barton Myers sadly concluded, returned the land to South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Coast to the planters, 
who had originally owned it. So they gave the land back to the owners, the white plantation mm -hmm. owners, to the very people <coughs> who had declared war on the United States. They benefited and were not punished, which is what it was intended to be, for their reaction or for their treasonous, treasonous mm -hmm. activities toward the United States government. What a deal, Eddie. It was already there. The ink hadn't dried on it. Yep. And the minute the next guy, that same thing's happened right now with uh, Trump stuff. Uh, Biden and Obama working hard to get rid of it. I mean, Kamala trying to get it. 40, That's a shame, Eddie. 40,000 free black folks had already moved onto the land that Sherman had given. They had to get out of there? Yeah, they had to. I mean, they gave the wow. land back to the, back to the original owners. But... You know, this is after Lincoln was dead, and Andrew Jackson, that's why I pronounced his name, and said it, you know, for folks to remember, Andrew Jackson, by executive order. So those orders do count, folks. By executive, that's why, that's why I constantly, you know, tell you and give you stories about executive orders. Mm -hmm. The nature of an executive order is it is only good as long as the executive that issued it is still in office. So that's why we know right now that Biden administration is not bothering much, pushing very much through Congress. Nope. They because, don't everything executive order. Yeah, because Congress won't put up with it. No. And he knows that. And the only way he can do is cheat, since he's illegitimate anyway, and just say, I'm just going to write it up, and since I'm the president, you got to do what I say. And he's partially right, because the House funds it. Now, now, now that you guys know, you know, this is for the community, that the 40 acres and the mule but, uh, wait a minute. Did, the did, did happen. Temporarily. Yeah, it, it did happen. Under Republican. And there was black folks who, who took ownership of the land, but, but the next president, Democrat. everybody know that Andrew Andrew Jackson got impeached when well, they went through the impeachment process and, and procedures. So, so again, we're bringing you information. Again, that's kind of what Post Talk Radio is, is done. Normally, we will have a conversation. This week, I am providing the community. With, knowledge. Inf with information yeah. that I know most of you did not get in school. Uh, yeah. And you haven't looked it up and it hasn't, you know, you'll say it, but, you know, a lot of times we say stuff because it's, they got good, they got good PR. You know, they, they got good public relations folks who make the word of the day uh, or make the, the phrase of the hour, uh, uh, make the TikTok or you know, uh, but Google it. You know, know forty acres of mule and it'll pop right up, Eddie. It is, it is but, people, but people don't do it. People don't do it. They're so know. smart. You got these smartphones. You got you got smartphones, but people don't use them for for the right stuff. Ah. And they, now they look up, they look up a dance, or they look up a, 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 a some gossip, uh, you know, look up some stuff, but they don't look up stuff that's gonna change their life. So a lot of a lot of white folks don't know this either. I bet you don't have a clue. That they intentionally was going to give 400,000 acres of coastal property to black folks. But, Eddie, right now, reality, that 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 obviously will never happen. No. Not, so not we passed now. that part. Yeah, yeah, not now. So now the, the fact that the, the Democrats are now in power and they use the reparations talk every time they try and get into power. But once they get into power, Biden hasn't said anything about reparations. <coughs> That I've heard, there's folks some money stuck in the COVID bill. Not, and he's not, and he's not, he's not going to yeah, think about it because he knows he only needed that for election to stir something right. up that he knows will never be paid on Eddie because yeah. our government has reneged on it before. Just like it's just sad, Eddie. It's sad. Yeah. All right, let's do on this day <laughs> and uh, and get that in. We'll and, go lighter now, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on this day, uh, March the thirteenth, sixteen. 39. Mm. Harvard University was named after clergyman John Harvard. I think he had slaves too. They yeah. wouldn't have brought that up. 
but that's what that 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 we've been. <laughs> now, and you got to remember, Harvard is is in Massachusetts. Harvard is, is in the north, so mm -hmm. he may or may not have had slaves. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. On this day, March the thirteenth, eighteen sixty five, Jefferson Davis signed a bill authorizing slaves to be used as soldiers for the Confederacy. So you got black guys in Confederate uniforms. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for those who know the, the battle we went through for the Confederate flag that's here in Hillsborough County, they had, they had black guys, black folks, who showed up to Augur for the side of the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. And they had Union uniforms and pictures and the whole nine mm -hmm. yards. So, you know, but anyway. Uh, in 1865, they 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 signed the authorized uh, you know bill that made slaves, not free slave slaves, mm. used as soldiers for the Confederacy. On this date, March the 13th, 1867, 1868, the United States Senate began to impeach. The, they began the impeachment trial for. President Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson, 1868. Mm -hmm. On this day, 1884, Standard Time was adopted throughout the United States. That's the thing that's happening this weekend. We're going to Daylight Saving Time. Why can't they just leave that alone? Well, they started it way back yeah, in 18... Yeah, they can change that. 18, it's, it's because of farming, you know that. 1868. It's all because of farming. 1884, they officially adopted standard time throughout the United States. Mm. And last but not least, on this date, March the 13th, 2012, after... 244 years of publication, the Encyclopedia Britannica announced it would discontinue its printed edition. Okay, we got we got a caller. Let's see if we can get him in, then we can get Gabriel. Gabriel, uh, caller, welcome to Porch Talk Radio. Who are you? Where are you calling from? And what say you? Hello? Hey, 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 it was Andrew Johnson, not Andrew Jackson. Yeah, that's what I just said. And he was a southern. No, you said Andrew Jackson. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, they two different people. Because yeah. Andrew Johnson was a southern sympathizer, and he's the one that sold black people out when it came to uh, reconstruction. So I just wanted to be clear on that. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, Gabriel, hit it. Yeah, but it still ain't working. So, guys, as we go forward here, understand it. That some people are saying for people to wear that with a stupid mask, you put that diaper on your face, and it says you put me and my family at risk by wearing a mask, by not wearing a mask. Well, I say you put me and my family at risk by mindlessly obeying anything the government and media tells you. Meanwhile, China rewrites Hong Kong's election rules to guarantee Beijing patriots stay in power. The same thing is happening in America today by the Democrats with H.R. 1, the government will run all elections, the government will fund all elections, the government will set up the districts from Washington, D.C. So once the Democrats stay in power, you want to talk about some corruption, you haven't seen corruption yet. Uh, let's see, what is with these people out of Mexico running over here? How do you walk 3,000 miles to Mexico without food or support, show up at the border 100 pounds overweight with cell phones still working? How does that work? Anybody think about that? Wearing Biden t-shirts. Uh, made in China. In case you were not uh, aware, uh, the image they show of the coronavirus, it's not real. They haven't really separated it. Right. <clears throat> they have no idea what the coronavirus looks like. They don't even know if it exists. Well, the virus picture they're using is from 1920. Woo! So, uh, challenging election results is okay if the people, uh, by the people, if it overturns a Republican victory. If it's a Democrat uh, fraudulent uh, situation like with Biden, then it's illegal and you should never do it. You should be killed immediately. Uh, meanwhile, stop calling healthy people asymptomatic. Healthy people are just healthy people. 
I mean, come on, folks, get, get, get on with this. Once you get the flu vaccine, then you can wear the mask till you die. Uh, let's see, uh, Gold Sachs, uh, people heard of Gold Sachs investing $10 billion to decrease the wealth gap between black women and white men. Black women in America currently hold 90% less wealth than American white men. Can you think of anything more useless for $10 billion to be wasted on as opposed to putting in black communities? Directly. Right. Right. Just directly. I mean, this is just stupid. Black lives matter. <laughs> Used to. Uh, let's see here. In fact, they've been sued by the, the Brown family yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. because they had no money going there. And to all the black people in uh, America right now, they ain't going to see a penny. It's gone. The white people run that organization anyway. Uh, let's see here now. That's case. Oh, this is great. The, America, the Agriculture Department announced this past <coughs> Tuesday it will take steps to ensure free meals are offered to all American school children when schools are out over the summer in an effort to reach more than estimated 12 million youths experiencing food insecurity. Back to corruption in the Democratic Party. You haven't seen corruption yet. When they start dishing out food to any and everybody, somebody's paying for that from somewhere. Democrats approved the $1.9 trillion in aid for ailing uh, nations. It's supposed to be ours. Uh, and this, the, the, so the Democrats basically passed that bill. Oh, and one last thing here to say uh, a happy thing. My stomach is flat. The L is just silent. Go. All right, all right. Well, thank you for listening, and, and I know it may have been long and, and, and drawn Good out, information, but, the, but the information was important, and I want to make sure that by other conversation, you know, you know, Porch Talk Radio is about moving the community forward, and we're not just about the local Tampa Bay, Hillsborough County, but we're about the black community as a whole, the diaspora of black folks in America. That's so, a word. So, so that's what this whole conversation was about. 40 acres and a mule, at least next time you'll have some background mm -hmm. on what it's mean and what it's about. And maybe next week we'll talk a little bit more about the concept or the idea of reparation. So, until next Saturday when we do this again, Boom. Tampa Bay, we love you. Same bat time, same bat station. Bye-bye. God bless America.